Hello everybody and welcome to the first edition of Post to Post. This is your captain speaking along with the rise of the machine, Mike Larkin. It's so good to work with you again. Ah, the feeling is mutual, man, as I've been taking my break from Max. First bout uh, against the shape at friggin' Promo Mania, man. I feel good coming back as a judge, getting to see all the action go down in the Promo League, Captain. I'm, I'm waiting for you to just go all, you know... Are you mocking me in that outfit? Uh, I'm, the, the, I'm the two waiting. what? I'm waiting for do what? Two, two youths. What? I'm ready for the whole thing, man. <laughs> I'm waiting for the whole thing. There's a fucking surprise. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm ready to you know put a case on all these bitches. Go ahead, man. I'm sorry. The two youths. Youths. Uh, also on this month's edition is Travis the Walker Anderson, currently handling business on behalf of Mike on Max Wrestling. Holding it down, Travis. I do what I can, I do what I can. Holding down the I'm fort like down. an AR-15 in a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I'm just glad to be a part of it all, that's all. Uh, yeah, and you reminded me, of course, that uh, we didn't even mention it on Max Wrestling last week. 12,000 the previous week. Thank you very much. Yeah, fucking hell. 12,000. And you handled majority of the show by yourself. And that that's saying <laughs> something in itself. People tune in for you, Dazzy. Well, in that case, those people can tune into Hollywood Curses then, because that's a new thing just taking off. Cheap plug. No Sparaktu, bro. That was a great second yeah. episode. I, I, I was recording with uh, Moses last night, and I got a notification, and it was just a picture of Nosferatu. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> hell yeah. I'm all about that shit. And the current number one contender, the RWT Kingpin, the master, Emir Blackbane Costello. All right, let me tell you something, bitch. Thank you. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you started to show off by talking about Mike Larkin and his hiatus. Mike Larkin's taking a hiatus the same way that David Brent <laughs> took a hiatus after he after he left the office, which is by showing up to the office every day thereafter. <laughs> All right, we we miss no Mike Larkin, but you know what? The world needs Mike Clark, and so I'm glad that we continue to see his face. And Travis the Walker Anderson. Jesus Christ, brother. It sounds like you can barely contain your excitement this morning. Wake up. Let's get <laughs> yeah. into this shit. The promo league is live. I am bursting with energy, and I'm ready to talk about this shit. Let's go. Mm-hmm. All right, then. <laughs> Let's jump straight in then. So you two were the first bout of the tournament. Uh, so I guess the first question is, Travis, why did you choose Amir for the very first challenge? You're going to ask me this after I've said it like a thousand <laughs> fucking times. It's just for so the yeah, benefit yeah. of those that haven't heard it yet. Benefit oh, of those okay. flash photographers. Yeah. <laughs> so clearly, you know, Emir is one of the absolute fucking best in the fucking business when it comes to pro Go on. Uh, <laughs> no, that's about it. <laughs> no, nah, um, um, we got with the promo league. This with this league, there's so many new faces. There's so many that was like iffy about it. Don't really know how it is, how it goes. You know how it works. So I went into this thing. You know, I just lost the title. So I'm like, let let's show these. I want to highlight. You know, the newcomers. That's why, you know, I challenged Phoenix, and we'll get into all that later. But um, I wanted to start it off with one of the absolute best. You know, so, like, hands down, everybody knows that I just love doing these promos. And uh, uh, me just being the champion, that puts me at the top. Not me trying to be cocky or nothing, but I mean, if I'm the champ, then I'm one of the best. So the two, the two top dogs in the league, I felt like we should, you know, start it off, show these new folks 
how it's done and set that standard, set that bar. Well, you did just that because as soon as that match was over, the challenges started rolling in, mostly from Cypher. I think he's <laughs> second only to you in terms of wanting to do promos more and more. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad to bring him in. He He's having a field day with it. He loves, you know interacting with all these new people that he's never met just like me you know so that's my, that's my favorite thing about doing promos is and working with max and working with all of you is getting to know all these people from across the world from you know the people like you dazzy from the uk emir and moses and moni from and robert and everybody else in california and you got Rob Chef from Florida. You got Andre Corbeil that I'm working with now in Canada. It, it's just completely mind-blowing to me, and I just love it. And yeah. he has the same – Corey has the same feeling about it because he's getting his music out there. People are – he's getting to know all these people. And, and we have, like, some of the greatest personalities in this league, and we get to – not just see what they do on camera, but we get to know them behind, like, backstage, as you will, you know. It's really great. Yeah. Mike, any questions? Really, all I can say is, with you guys in the first bout, I'll be honest, a lot of these have been tough to judge. Because, I'll be honest, everybody's been killing it. But to start it off the way you guys did, it's great just to see, well, obviously, you, Trav, the whole thing, you know, ripping off the shirt and just being loyal, being dedicated. And you, Amir, <laughs> I had to talk about it, but you and Mir had the had the continuity, you know, the very similarities of meeting the superstars and, you know, souls getting snatched by the demoness. It's one of those things where I enjoyed the continuity, so it was very hard for me to judge, but I think you both killed it uh, to start off the promo league, and you both start off very strong. Yeah, I, was, I remember thinking, first off, I didn't understand how this whole thing worked, so <laughs> I, I just thought... Um, you know what? I've I've uh I've mended some relationships. I I mean, you know, maybe I can figure out a little bit of time to participate in some things. I think I'll join the promo league. I didn't really want the pressure of having to come up with a with a good promo cuz it means a lot to me and I I put a lot into this, but I just thought, you know what? I'll I'll do it and see what happens. And so then I thought, yeah, I'll I'm like the last person to enter at that point. So clearly I'll start at the bottom and then nobody will really mess with me. And then from time to time, I'll cut a promo and put a, put a motherfucker in a place. Yeah. I mean, nothing too big, but I didn't get, I didn't understand the system. And so I came in at number one and I was like, Oh shit. And then <laughs> I, was like, I was like, Oh man, this is like, if you, can you imagine if you, if you thought you were on the ground and then you blinked, and you were on top of the Empire State Building. You're like, well, how the, how the fuck did I get up here? And um, before before I could figure it out, Travis the Walker Anderson was challenging me. And I just thought to myself, well, this isn't good. Because I'm coming off of no promos for I don't know how long. And obviously, uh, the uh, good friends, better enemies with David... That didn't end up being a promo. That just ended. We just sat around and and gave each other hand jobs. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's that's what that was. It was a a jacking good time. It was the verbal fellatio. <laughs> it was the verbal fellatio. There you go. So, the, but then you got then you got uh, Travis the Walker Anderson, who's in competition form because he hasn't missed a beat and he's been he's been going strong. And, and I'm this fucking old. Not even a part timer, not even a some timer, <laughs> coming in trying to blow the dust off my mic, and I was just like, bah, I don't really know how this is gonna go, but whatever I do, I know I gotta disrespect him, and um, <laughs> so, <laughs> well, it was uh, it was scary, uh, but it was it was a lot of fun to stretch my creative muscles as they haven't been used in a long time, um. And just kind of put my brain to work and see what I could come up with. And once I did that, I got that that fire and that excitement in me again. And so I, I Travis the Walker Anderson, I thank you for calling me out. I think that you are um, 
a workhorse. You've obviously continued to call people out every week and really kept this thing going. Um, I think you're an asshole for tearing <laughs> that shirt. And I think you're a bigger asshole for throwing it in the dumpster. How dare you, sir? How dare <laughs> <Okay>. you? <laughs> All right. Let me clear the fucking air when it comes to this. Let me do it on air, on the call, right now. now. While this is all over a shirt, Travis. Covid. The world is ending. This shirt is bigger than COVID nineteen, Travis. <laughs> you tore the okay. damn shirt, Travis. So, so not many people know. Um, on Christmas Day last year, I got an eviction notice. So I had to, I had to move. I had a very 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 small amount of time to move um meanwhile while i was trying to work things out i had to cut the power and whatnot so when you cut the power it's winter critters like to move in um so a lot of my stuff actually got destroyed by rats i wasn't there there was no power. There was like nobody living there. So it just kind of became abandoned and a lot of like there was a lot of damn rats in that place. And I had to throw out probably half of my wardrobe. And um unfortunately your shirt was one of them. So it, it was completely destroyed as is you couldn't tell because they ate the back of it um there was a couple bite marks on the front but you couldn't see it in the video but there's like no way in hell i was gonna wear it there's no way i would even send it to you you know i i I wouldn't do that so i even told you that once um all this covid clears up and businesses start to open up once the mall here opens back up there's a folder on their computer with all the rwt designs all the shirts designs that i've done it's got my name on it i'm gonna go back i'm gonna get about three more here made and i'm gonna mail you one i'm gonna get mine back so it'll be good (laughs) So fucking rats destroyed it. It's a damn rat. Uh, yeah, man. You ever, you guys ever have that moment where you're watching a TV show, and there's some guy that's like, he sees, he sees his woman, walking with a guy, and he's like, he's about to do some crazy shit, and he's gonna totally embarrass himself. But he, as the audience member, you know. That's just her brother that he's never met that's flew in from out of town. But this guy thinks that his woman's cheating on him. And he's he's hiding in the bushes. He's he's up in the trees. He's doing all this crazy shit. And then eventually he has the moment where he does something stupid and then finds out, like, what are you talking about? This is my brother. It's not what you think. So what Amir just said there, it's like Antoine Dobson. He's climbing in your window, snatching your people up, trying to rape them so they need to hide your kids, hide your wives. Hide your kids, hide your wives, something like that, right, Amir? Yeah, hide your husbands because they're raping everybody out here. You don't even yes. have to come and confess. We're going to find you so you can run and tell that homeboy. Home, home, homeboy. Right. So, well, so I still had to say. So, <laughs> Travis, Travis, I knew literally the first seven seconds of that story and none of the rest of it. <laughs> so, so, listen, I'm going all around town. I'm slinging mud on your name. I'm I'm back at Starbucks where I used to stalk that one girl. And uh, she's like, oh, you're back. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not here for coffee. I'm here to talk about Travis Anderson. She ripped a shirt. She, what about a shirt? No, listen up. Listen, bitch. I'm trying to get this shit off my chest the same way he got that shirt off his chest. And then <laughs> I love you, Travis. I had I had no idea. I love you, brother. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Hey, hey, but you know what still is in, intact, though, right? The belt. Uh, well, well, yeah, but uh, no, my uh, queen pin shirt. Ah, oh. <laughs> how, how fitting! How fitting! <laughs> that one's in a glass case. 
<laughs> exactly. And, uh, I had like about about like two weeks after I had uh, the kingpin shirt made. I made one for Moni. <laughs> yeah, that one was treated quite nicely. I, I as I recall, uh, one rat bit a hole into it, and the other the other rats got together and stitched it back up. Wait, what are you doing? <laughs> it's not that one. Save those bites for the kingpin shirt. Well, it is oh, true. Rats can sew because I saw it in the Disney Cat Cinderella. Exactly. They can sing too. Now, uh, another one that really, uh, that really, really sucked is um, I bought uh, right before I went to WrestleMania in New Orleans, where I met you, Emir. Um, I bought a uh, complete AJ Styles uh, gear set. It had the, like the leather vest with the hood, you know, uh, the whole nine. Uh, my AJ Styles leather vest got ruined. Thing oh, too. Ah, that's the worst. Yeah. That 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 you one, know what? That one sucked. <laughs> Travis, all this stuff, man. Let me tell you something. Bitch. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I beat Michael Larkin. Yes. <laughs> 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 All right, what did you want to tell us, bitch? Emir? I think we're the bitch. We're the bitch? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, you must have gone back to Starbucks. Listen, it was rats. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, while we wait for Amir, another question for Travis. Uh, you've continued to compete since then, but it's been a bumpy road. Um, you got a victory against the Phoenix, but then fell to Brittany Savage. Luckily, you had your immunity to stay in fourth place. That, that wasn't really a question; that was a statement. <laughs> well, all right, I'll, that was a, that was a WWE <laughs> style question. So you have a match tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, let me add to that because before we even talk about Brittany fucking Savage, let me just say this. The Phoenix, I'll be honest with you, as someone for his first video promo, I like the introduction to the Demon of the Welsh Valleys and you driving down 80 miles per hour, talk about the title and talk about these damn biased judges you owed up, son of a gun. I got Sabotage. <laughs> Sabotage. I thought it was I thought it was very good just to see what you both did. Again, I was very impressed with both of you. And again, the Phoenix, I cannot wait till his upcoming bouts with the uh, I know he's got Cypher on the way, but yeah, man, both of you guys impressed each other and you guys impressed me. Yeah, I really like going up against Phoenix. Uh I, that that was like a really shit week too and I, I was having to work I, hell he mere knows how it is. I had I had to work 7 days a week that week. I was like Fuck, I got to get this promo in. This is what I give for not looking at my schedule. <laughs> but um, I was like, well, hell, you know, I got an hour drive to work. Might as well just take that time to record it. It took me about like three or four times to damn record it because I, I would be about a minute and a half in. And then uh, I, I would see a cop. I'm like, shit. Okay. <laughs> I'll put my phone down, pass the cop, pull it back up. Like, damn it, there's another one. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I like going up against Phoenix. Uh, I, I had I had to prove to myself at least I can beat Phoenix in something. And Lord knows I'm not going to beat him in trivia. So, at least I had to uh, beat him in promos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'll be honest with you now. After watching that, makes me want to take Phoenix and our feud into the promo game, for God's sake. But I digress. It's one of those things where the Phoenix is really coming into his own with the Demon of the Welsh Rallies. And you, again, I love both of your passions. I thought they were both great. And you both had a lot of continuity with what you both did. Talk about, you know, desperation, shortest knowledge champ, shortest promo champ. So I think you both delivered. And what was that about? And now I got to ask you, Mr. Brittany Fuck fucking savage over here um it's one of those things where i that watching her promo that was just a straight up wrestling promo and you 
brought back the walker with the whole darkness and the spider, which cracked me up because somebody listens to our shows. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where I really like the fact that you did your homework also on that front. But studying now, I'm curious because you're going against someone who's been in the business for eight years, someone who has had a taste of professional wrestling, wrestling best being a comp SmackDown, team with AJ Lee going against the best. Like she said in her promo, Mercedes Martinez, she's been in there with Sue Young, Ruby Riot, the list goes on and on. So I got to ask ask you what did you actually do to study and prepare for that besides listening to the pop culture history podcast what promos and what did you watch for that got you into that mindset to do what you did so when it came to doing that promo with her um i i i thought about doing that you know like going on youtube looking up some of her matches um i actually did i watched like one match uh it was like a Three, the beer belly bandits or whatever. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, well, I watched that and I saw this one little short promo video that she did. Um, and I thought about using that, but I was like, Let, let's not. Yeah, I, I didn't want to do that. Uh, that was just, that just seemed too easy to do. Um, I was excited for Brittany to come in because. I, the only reason why I did the pop culture show with you mm-hmm. was because I was so pissed off at the one that y'all did. You and uh, <laughs> Brittany Savage did. Bowed up. Bowed up. Well, so it was a uh, it was a episode about the Halloween shows of Boy Meets World. Yes. It. I was so excited because I love Boy Meets World. Yes. I was like, hell yeah, I'll definitely. I'll definitely listen to that. So Mike sends me the link. I listened to it. It was an hour and a half show and maybe maybe 15 minutes of the show. They actually talk Boy Meets World. <laughs> well, I guess we go off. We go off track. We banter. But yeah, it's one of those, yeah. it's one of those things where I think with her, like with what she did, she used the psychology of the car of you being in your car, a mere yeah. style in your car. Um, doing what she did there, <laughs> it symbolized it. And also the fact that, you know, her track record with men, there was validity to that, which I thought was kind of funny and cute that she brought that up. So it, it's one of those things where she cut the traditional professional wrestling from him. Again, I like the fact that you brought the walker back and you kind of took a jab at Robert Davis, which we'll get into later in the show here. But yeah, with the whole fact that you got the loud music and you can barely hear what you're saying. So you also tied in the fact that you got Robert Davis coming up soon. So like I said, I, I give you a lot of props for calling out the Savage, who is now number three in the uh, promo league. Yeah, so like hit that episode of the Pop Culture Show. Yes, so y'all, you, you kept giving her hell about the, there being a spider in her room or something. Yes. Like <laughs> and uh, so I, you, I, I talked about that in the promo. I, I went the scary horror route. Um, I dropped some, you know, teasers, some Easter eggs in that promo. I, I put a lot into that one. Um, it didn't quite come out the way I wanted it, but I was happy with it at the same time. Um, but the purpose of that one, uh, yeah, it, I, I got what I wanted out of it. I wanted Brittany to have fun. I wanted her to enjoy mine. And just, it's all about having fun. And that's the main focus point in all of it. And doing these promos is just getting to know each other and having fun with it. And she really had fun with it. She loved it. She enjoyed mine. And that's all I can ask for. Of course, man. It's really all about artistic expression and just telling the story through your words. And I think you both did that and encompassed it with both of your promos. Like I said, I've been so happy with what's been going down in Promo League. I got to say, we saw Mike Jolly against Cypher. Mike is the heavy metal Jesus host of the Washington Wrestle Talk podcast, The Oddity. He did his thing against Corey. So each and every bout has been awesome. Now, I got to ask you, Mr. Amir, Mr. I Don't Want That Smoke. With Britney fucking Savage. My question to you, sir, is that is possibly someone who might be coming for you. You know, you're all both are in the top five. So what did you think about what Britney Savage did? Man, I thought Britney Savage lived up to her name. I, I thought her promo was savage. 
And this about her is she's Britney Savage has a fucking attitude. Okay. Yes. You could you could tell you could tell like you could see attitude on on a, on a person's face, and she the whole look on her face was like. What the fuck? Like who do who the fuck do you think you are? She didn't she didn't really come out and say that, but her face was like, "What the fuck am I even doing here? Who are you even?" And I I was looking at that. I thought Travis the Walker Anderson calls out Britney Savage. First off, what a pair! How how do you how do you get around life lugging a pair of balls that big? And you just drag them while you walk. Like how does it work? Is there a little <laughs> cart on the of side courage. of you that, that, of that your balls can roll down the street with you? I don't know, but um, <laughs> yeah. I, well. If you, if you want to throw a little bit of history into it, uh, is the this deal, history about your balls? Well, no. Uh, it, yes and no, actually. <laughs> you go back, <laughs> go back to a promo series last year. The build for me and uh, Andre Corbill. Andre kept saying that I don't have the balls. I don't have balls. Blah 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 blah. Uh, I left them at home with my mom or whatever. And so in my promo, I got uh, I talked my wife into uh, jumping in on camera with me, and have her just look down at my crotch and be like, look at the camera, and be like, he's got his. Do you? Uh, <laughs> I uh, prove uh, it. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It takes I, it takes guts, man. Good for you for calling her out. And good for her for stepping up. And I think that there's more pressure on Britney Savage than there is on anybody else because people are looking at you like, listen, kid, you're you're in the business. So you got to come with the goods. You can't get out of here and suck because you can't really, if you're Britney Savage, you really can't get out here and let anybody show you up. Because this, don't get me wrong, we're all having fun for sure. We're all having fun. But if you think there aren't people in this league that take this serious – and are really competing. If you think there aren't people that would really like to get a legit win over Britney Savage and they'll boast about that, you're crazy. There's a belt on the line. All right, even the demoness shouldn't feel safe at this point. <laughs> that well, was, we, then we finally get that female belt that we've all wanted. Yeah. You know, the that fact that crazy. she's in the business is the reason I love the fact that she decided to troll Travis by doing a promo from her car. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, here's the thing about that. Hey, she's not just trolling me. She's also trolling me, Mir. She's also trolling <laughs> you, Corey. <laughs> Moses. Of, yeah, Moses. He's done his from Mike, can she speak Spanish? I'll be honest with you. I don't believe so. No. <laughs> Having the three years that I've known that woman, no. I have no, 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 no Espanol on a. I would love. Okay, here's the thing. I would love to see that because here's the thing. Moses would probably channel his inner Enrique Iglesias and talk about the rhythm divine <laughs> and bailamos. And then Brittany would just be like, I don't give a fuck what you just said to me, whispering sweet nothings. And she would have that cocky face that Amir was talking about. So that's something that I would like to see. I mean, you got not so Rico Suave and Brittany Savage. Yeah, well, on the topic of uh, Hell Jefe, Mr. Kingpin, Moses Marquez is your next match coming today, actually. Moses is currently in second place. Um, Now, after May 28th, if you're still number one contender, you can't be challenged because you will then be locked in to face the Demon S at Trivia Takeover. Um, Well, what day of May is this? Was it the 12th? It's the 12th today, yes. Yep, yep. I have so, to look at the calendar because all days blur yeah. into one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not being presumptuous. I'm just asking a question. But assuming, <laughs> <laughs> let's say I find a way to get past Moses Marquez, then I can be challenged maybe at least twice more, which yeah. means I may have to I may have to see Brittany Savage, which would be unfortunate uh, on all accounts. But... But let's not look ahead. Let's instead stare at directly what's in front of me. First off, how the fuck am I supposed to beat Moses? Did you guys see that challenge video? What the fuck, right? And that was just a, that was just a call out video. That's that's what made me mad. You 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 gonna flex on me like that just to call me out? God damn! It's not even the fucking promo. Like, what am I supposed to do with the kid? I I, I don't know, man. That that thing, man. That call out video. Moses Marquez is going to change the game because as of right now, I think most people think, I don't know, write, write a post in the group or maybe go live. 
but he put that that call out video was so um so polished and produced he's going to make it to where every time anybody does a promo they got to do double duty they got to first come up with a you know a creative like you know these all these young kids are like you can't just walk up to a girl anymore and be like hey you want to go to prom you got to like have a police officer pull her over Flash and mob. scare the shit out of her. <laughs> and it's, and then there's, it turns into a proposal. There's got to be a goddamn champagne party. Moses is adding extra layers that don't need to be there for everybody else who don't want to work as hard as him. Um, but yeah, hey, Jesus Christ, it would, was great. Would, would you like a piece of advice? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I know, I know you kind of went – on a little hiatus you got really crazy with work so i don't know if you caught the show or not but moses has said on air that el jefe is not the only person competing oh oh well that's like he's got a split personality disorder maybe kind of like a three faces of folly situation maybe mm, it's patricia so the <laughs> so, uh, how very, I, I, uh... my, so my my advice to you is don't cut a promo on El Jefe, because if you recall to mine and Moses's first ever promos that we did, it was against each other, and he did a promo on the Walker. He did a promo on the mask, and I didn't even use the damn mask. So just be like, I'm talking to the person inside Moses. Yeah, whoever you think <laughs> you are right now. And I think that's <laughs> what I think that's what helped me get that ninety one percent because he cut a promo on the mask and I didn't even use it. I completely psyched him out. He loves to bring up that ninety one percent. He does. I love doing it. <laughs> I fucking love doing it. <laughs> well, well I it's no surprise really that Moses is up trying to up the stakes because he's made it no secret that he wants everything by the time we get to promo mania next year to face you Mike he wants to be promo champion knowledge champion predictions champion you know well I mean to quote someone I know on this call everybody want to be like Mike so I mean <laughs> hey it is what it is but no I, I look at it like this I mean he's got you Amir but right now with what you got with Moses it's the whole road it's the whole jaunt all the way up to promo mania 6 and I mean I saw his response video last week on Max I thought it was absolutely superb so I mean, he said a lot on Max uh, last week as well. There's a lot of validity. Him and I plan to steal the damn show. If you saw what I did with the shape at Promo Mania, with what I do with Moses, man, there's going to be a lot of creativity. There's going to be a lot of fun, and there's got going to be a lot of seriousness. And I could tell he's hungry, and he wants to put his best foot forward going in to Promo Mania. No disrespect to the kingpin over here, but next year is the promo of his life. So I look forward to seeing what he brings going through and i'm not going to be lazy like he said i'm going to be judging i'm gonna be watching and we both have a year to adapt so it's put up or shut up time so let's see what mr el jefe brings i'm all for it i'm all about it go ahead yeah i don't yeah, i don't i don't take it as any disrespect because i think that um i'm happy that moses marquez has to face you because i feel like that's exactly the distraction he needs to kind of overlook me and and let's be clear about something else too. We, Daz, have you have you seen my promo yet? No, because you emailed it to me overnight because it wouldn't go to a drop box. That's my bad. I didn't free up any space. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, no, I went to open good. it and I had to ask for permission from from you to open it. So I've sent you permission. <laughs> what? I didn't even. I thought I gave. Uh, yeah, I'll figure. I'll Gmail figure that just part loves out, to but... fuck with people. Here's an email, but you can't open it unless you ask them nicely. Yep. Exactly. exactly. It's like it came from me. I'll I'll figure that part of it out. But I I'll say this, um, Moses Marquez. I I loved his challenge video. I I can't stop talking about it. And then it it lit a fire in me, and got my creative juices going. And Travis to Walker Anderson. I appreciate your advice. You take that advice back to your boy. You'll, I'm sure if you you're trying to find him, you can catch him around the bend. He did, he might not know what he's got coming from me. He might not know he's got a face from me. And my promo is in, so this isn't a version of I heard what Travis said and then tried to replicate or duplicate. My promo is done and in Daz's 
in inbox and Moses Marquez, El Jefe, the Crippler, whoever whoever you think you are right now, you better watch out, motherfucker. All right, because I'm I'm not I'm not just gonna sit down and let you beat me. If you're gonna beat me, it's gonna be the dog fight of your life. And by the time you're done with me, you ain't gonna have enough energy to face Mike Larkin. Oh snap! Pretty much, he's telling Moses he's gonna get that pound, and you gonna learn today. You just went on him, Kevin Hart. You gonna learn today. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'll be honest with you, just to add on to Moses Marquez, because I will be responding to what he said on Max. Yes, Travis, we will. I know we got a year, but we be responding. I heard you last week. You have a damn year. (laughs) But, hey, man, it's all about the build. It's all about the fun. But also, I think what Moses Marquez and anybody else needs to realize, I have a briefcase. It's called the IRF contract. So, hello. And number two. He's got to also worry about Trivia Takeover because he is that whole show right there, Trivia Takeover, surrounded by the Knowledge Championship. He's got former Knowledge Champion, two-time Knowledge Champion, and Iron Bank winner, Kenny Keller. He's got the Phoenix, who's been scratching and clawing to win it back after a over 30-plus day reign. We also got you, Travis, in there, and we got the newcomer that went to the finale of Iron Bank with me, the wrestling gal herself, Ella J. So he's got a lot of people to worry about going to Trivia Takeover. Moses Marquez, this is the pressure of being the star of the show. Go ahead, and Jim. new rules. And new rules, yes, thank you. Um, the other bout we haven't talked about yet that we've had so far uh, was the latest one, Trippy Wolf versus Ted P. De Niro. The only promo hey. I've ever had to put a strobe lighting warning on at the start. Hey, man, I'm, I'm an <laughs> epileptic. That shit's not funny. Trippy, I love you, man. That was a hell of a promo, but no more strobe lights. I don't need to have a seizure. Thank you very much. Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, you know, strobe lighting doesn't affect me, but even I watched it like, shit. <laughs> well, I mean, it's very unique. I mean, from two artists that are Ted P. De Niro and Trippy Wolf, I mean, they both are great at what they do from the rap side of things. Yeah. And for me, Teddy just calling them Riff Raff was absolutely hilarious while he's eating the chips. I mean, it's one of those things where Teddy had me entertained and Trippy was very. The graphics was cool with the whole karate, the whole nine thing, and then pretty much saying what he's going to do to the competition. He's got a lot of balls. He's got a lot of, you know, oomph to him. So I liked him. Mm. I thought they both killed it this week. Like I said, I know I sound like a broken record, but goddamn, everybody's stepping it up. So go ahead. Yeah, Trippy also using his own graphics mean it saves me a job. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> also, people using their own music saves me a job. By the way, so Moses thank you very Marquez, much, I told him that. That badass theme for, for him, damn, man. That was that was badass for El Jefe. I like that. Yeah, thank you, Trippy, Cypher, and, and Moses for saving me a job of finding some music. Because <laughs> it's not easy anymore when we when we can't use copyright. Yeah. I mean, Can I, uh, let me tell you guys something real quick about Ted P. De Niro and, and the, <laughs> the way that he accepted Trippy Wolf's, uh, <laughs> Trippy Wolf's call up. First off, the only man on the planet that's blacker than Mike Larkin is Ted P. De Niro. Okay? <laughs> and the way that – wait, Dazzy Lee, can, what can I say on this show without offending? You can say niggly. Niggly. All right. That was some niggly shit, okay? <laughs> that's what that was. The way that he sat in the camera and smacked on them chips, that was – was the, that was the niggliest shit I've ever seen in my life. I right. just smacked and smacked and then, then just casually glanced into the camera. <laughs> Someone tell Riff Raff I accept. And he's done. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? That shit. I saw, I saw that clip. I immediately went and applied for food stamps. It was insane. I... <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on there. Some food stamps over here. What the hell's wrong? Wu Tang style, you like it wrong? What the fuck? That shit was dope. That shit was dope. Hey, you gotta love Ted P. De Niro. By the way, uh, he celebrated a birthday recently. And yeah. um, the thing I like about him, hey man, he, we all know Ted P. He keeps it raw. I think the thing that's the most upsetting about Ted P. And Corey, a.k.a. Cypher, and Trippy Wolf. We got all these people up in here claiming to be rappers, and we ain't had no motherfucking battle yet. What the fuck, rappers? <laughs> Get your shit together. Everybody's missing out on the perfect opportunity. What's going on? Hey, even, even Cypher and Teddy P were supposed to have a battle rap not too long ago, and it was just promos. Wait a minute, Amir. You're a rapper, too. Get on in there. Fatal 4-Way. Yeah, 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 but you know what, though? So Ted P. De Niro refused to compete against me. Uh, 
out of respect, and I, I, I respect that. And I ain't heard nothing out of Cypher, and I ain't heard nothing out of Trippy Wolf. Uh, by the way, respect to both those men. Um, but at some point, if I end up facing a rapper, I'm down to go, you know me. First off, fuck Butcher. David, are you out there? Can you hear me, motherfucker? Yeah, don't forget who made that song. So if it comes down to it, y'all know I go, I'll pick up the microphone. I go hard in the paint. Well, you also got Hill Team 6 all day every day in the motherfucking building. We up in here. Queen's my city. I rep my city. What with Chef being in the promo league now, so that's something for you. Yeah, Chef. The thing about Rob Chef, uh, Rob, Rob Chef, he scares me a little bit. <laughs> Rob Chef seems like very aggressive. Like if I... <laughs> okay, as someone who's known him for four years, absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah, he seems he seems like he's aggressive in situations that don't require aggression. Yeah, you know I mean, like, can you just imagine Rob Chef just ordering some McDonald's? You know what I'm saying? Walking to McDonald's, how can I help you? Yeah, man, what, I want a fucking burger, man. Don't fucking catch up on it like last time. Shit, give me some fries. I'm like, yeah, it's yes, like sir. DMX. It's like DMX. Hey, yo, bitch, I want to get this motherfucker <laughs> me. Arr, arr, arr. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love Rob Chef. Um, so I I saw him in RWT for I don't know a long time and never really knew who he was. I thought his name was cool, but he seemed pretty quiet. I had no idea he had a podcast. I had no I didn't really know anything about him. And then on at some point, I think I became aware of him because uh, Nicola was sharing a lot of his stuff. And um, turns out Rob Chef is fantastic. So I'm I'm really happy to know him and. Uh, I appreciate everything that he's doing right now as he comes up in the business. Mm-hmm. Man, it's also it's one of those things where we got a lot of people. And speaking of people, because we were going down the whole thing with the uh, rankings and the promo league. Travis the Walker Anderson, you got, and you talked about it on Max, you got Robert Davis, two out of three falls. We got you and Robert Davis coming up. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Captain, is the third one at Trivia Takeover. Did I get that right? Um, I haven't actually seen a timeline. Oh, okay. So, okay. so basically what he's wanting to do, he's calling it a two out of three falls, but it's not really a two out of three falls. Uh, he just wants to go three matches. Okay. Um, I think that's the way I'm taking it. <laughs> because, I mean, hey, we're not going to just do like three promos and then the better two just move up two rankings. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's going to work like that. Um, we're just going to have three matches. Um, we're going to do the first one this week, then another one next week, and then the third one he wants to be at Trivia Takeover. Okay, because if that's the case, then Robert Davis will be in his second Trivia Takeover and as far as a promo about goes then. Yes. But the records show it is the second match. <sighs> I'm ready to see Robert Davis come out and do something, man. I, Robert Davis, he reminds me. Well, I don't know who he reminds me of, but Robert Davis is a guy that is always right there in the conversation. But he is yet to taste the promo championship. And it's. It's weird, right? He, he seems like he's a, he's he's a wild card. He really he's as good as anybody, better than most, and he's always right in the conversation. But he's he's yet to make whatever the calculated moves are that you have to make to end up being the guy, or, you know, or the girl. And I, but he's got the goods. He's got multiple characters, multiple layers, and. The last time I had to face Robert Davis, I think I had an anxiety attack. So hopefully I don't have to see him anytime soon. Now, him and Travis, you guys tear each other apart. There's nothing left of either one of you. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it comes to Robert Davis, he's since day one, he's always been my favorite. Uh, he's always been my favorite competitor. I, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. I, I like his style. I love the crazy eyes. I, I, I like what he does. Um and that that's why I was so hell bent on trying to talk him into joining the league is because I've never had the opportunity to go one on one with him. And 
that's that's the other reason of me just calling out everybody each week is because like you and I, uh, Emir, last year we went one on one, but it was kind of rigged, you know. It, it was set up to where I was put over. And so we didn't have a legit, like, one-on-one match where we were actually trying to win, both of us. So, it, wait, real it's quick, real quick about that. I, wait, I said, I can't, there was something I said, wait, hey, Mike Larkin, didn't, didn't your mom, your mom popped for something I said in that promo. Oh, right? yeah, get off my nuts, homie. <laughs> <laughs> that's why i love mama larkin <laughs> all right go ahead Travis. <laughs> but um that, that's uh, that's another reason of me calling out different people each week is about going up against somebody i haven't been up against before because i mean for majority of the end of last year it was only me and mike larkin Right. Like almost every fucking week. <laughs> I'll be like, honest with you, I, as someone who was on the other end of that, don't mean to cut you off. It can get tiresome if you just keep going against the same person over and right. over and over. Yeah. yeah, so there's it was me and Mike, we did it a bunch last week uh last year. Then me and Moses went about three times last year. Mm-hmm. Uh me and Butcher did it a couple of times. And then so it was like the same people each every time so it kind of got old and i didn't get to go up against you know nikola i didn't get to go up against teddy p or uh robert davis or zach herring i I didn't get to go up against the a block so there's a lot of people that i haven't gone one-on-one against so and then Robert Davis has to make this video with Nikola just completely blasting me, and I fucking loved it. It was absolutely amazing. I'm like, you have to join this fucking league so I can face you. It wasn't me talking shit. It's just I want to go up against the best, and Robert Davis is one of the best. I agree. Robert Davis is definitely one of the best. And I will say, uh, Travis the Walker Anderson, I don't think it's any secret that you were my favorite. Um, I remember the first promo I ever saw you cut with that mask on. I, I was watching, there was a show I was watching at the time. Mike, I don't know why I can't ever think of the name of this damn show. It came on FX. Walking Dead. And, Walking no, Dead. No, no, no. The strain, the strain, the strain, the strain. The strain was a crazy. I've I've never seen The Walking Dead. Feel free to not attack me. Um, That's okay, I'm strain, with you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I I watched The Strain to completion, and when you came out with that mask on, oh, I was like, oh my god, this is that motherfucker from The Strain. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was like, and it was, it blew my mind, man. The the lighting was just right. Uh, the cadence of your voice, the look in your eyes, it was all. It was amazing. I loved it. And I was completely in love with the Walker character. And I had the Walker uh, winning the whole um, you know, promo climax or whatever the, the uh, competition was at the time, except for before that competition started, a promo went out, a live, a live video on RWT. And and I got introduced to the demoness, and it was over after that. <laughs> before, before a time, before a time, oh, Travis, you were my hero. <laughs> I don't mean to cut you off, but all I gotta say is, let me tell you something, Amir. Um, is it gonna be one of those things where we're gonna actually have a competition? If it winds up you being against the demoness, are you gonna be a fanboy with the? <laughs> what's what's the dealio there, man? <laughs> Let me. Now I feel pressure. I, I, you know how often I start my sentences off with "Let me tell you something" <laughs> that I have to remember when I can and can't add the bitch. But uh, let me tell you something. Uh, no bitch. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. If I go against the demoness, if I have the opportunity, and it'll be what a privilege, what an honor it will be. I think what's going to be unfortunate for her is that I love the demoness. I respect the demoness. I, I love everything about her. 
But you understand, growing up, my favorite wrestler was Triple H. And I, I my mentality is that of the Cerebral Assassin. Triple H is best friends with Shawn Michaels. There's people that he loves and respects, but he never let anything, anything, stand between him and that title. It was the most important thing to him. It was the only reason why he was there, and he didn't care who he had to talk about. He didn't care who he had to hit with a sledgehammer. He didn't care what he had to do. Lie, cheat, scheme, whatever it was, he was going to do whatever it took to make sure that he had that belt. I love the Demoness, but if she and I end up facing each other... I'm throwing everything, including the kitchen sink. It is what it is. I, I see a meme coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so to end the show, um, as the current pandemic lockdown has become even more confusing, go to work, but don't go to work, uh, we're no longer going to make you wait until Uncaged for the Demon S versus the Shape. We brought it forward to this show. So before we get to that, thank you to the Kingpin and the Walker. Let the people know where they can find you. Since Travis is currently on Max regularly, I'm going to let the Kingpin go first. I can be found... Uh, I don't really go on Twitter much, but you can go there. I'm sure it's some version of RWT or RWT podcast, something like that. If you can get to Mike Larkin, you can get to me. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um, and Instagram, RWT, Raw Wrestling Talk, and of course... Uh, the RWT group and listen I'm I'm having a lot of fun with RWT news if you have a a news story you know, about a wrestling group or about something that's happening within your group something you want to promote please let me write that story and put it out to uh, out there in the, in the universe uh, send me emails to podcast rwt at gmail.com and um, I'll get that story written up and it'll go out and we can kind of promote things together. Um, and I really want to thank you guys for letting me be on the show. And I'm I'm happy to hear that uh, the shape against the Demoness is happening today because I I couldn't wait uh, for the, the, the Demoness to be champion someday. And now that she's been champion, I feel like we've gotten a lot less of her than we normally would during the chase, you know? Yeah. And, and to get this whatever this is because I have not seen anything so to get this is is going to be amazing so thank you thank you to the shape and thank you to uh, the demoness for putting on what I'm sure is going to be a great show yeah I think this was the whole point because uh, the demoness doesn't want to get stale she doesn't want to be sitting around doing anything while everybody else is competing uh, so I, this was this was also to give Travis time to uh, look up his own usernames where can people find you <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> hey, hey! Now, thanks to me doing uh, the shows with Moses, I'm having to do my plugs every fucking week. So I, I actually remember, Twitter is Walker underscore TA ninety two. Now, granted, I love it when you do it because it makes me feel important that you say it and I don't have to. <laughs> but yeah, no. Nah, uh, Twitter is Walker underscore T892. Who Facebook, Travis the Walker Anderson. It's not hard to find me. Max Wrestling, RWT Group. Um, check out what we've been doing with the untitled AEW and NXT review show. Um, Andre Corbeil, got to give a shout out to him. Yeah. He just put up a uh, fucking hell. He just put up this amazing video montage intro for us for uh the retro rewind when we uh reviewed bash at the beach 1996 uh it was a great show it was a lot of fun um and andre put it up on wrestling with wrestling and just did amazing job for youtube it, it was amazing moses and i both absolutely loved it so shout out to him and that's about it yeah, people, make sure you uh, you go subscribe to Andre Corbeil as well. Just endless content. <clears throat> and Mike, I've been waiting five weeks to say this. Who you been talking to? 
Moses, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun to be that with Moses, and I had to get out Moses, bro, in there. But, yeah, no, it's, I look forward to that with uh, Moses Marquez next year. And uh, like he said, just to reiterate, we're going to tear it down. We're going to steal the show. It is the Mo versus Larkin show, as he put it. So, Moses Marquez, I may say that you're not so Rico Suave and that you suck and you make me want to up Chuck. But it's going to be fun when we do the damn thing. So as far as me talking to people, you can check out the latest edition of the Pop Culture History Podcast with myself, Brittany Savage, and uh, one of her best rivals, one of her best uh, opponents in the ring, that being the Black Rose, Nikki Adams. Uh, you could check out myself and Andre Corbeil on Wrestling with Wrestling. We have an interview coming up with Impact Wrestling star Rohit Raju of the Daisy Hit Squad. You can check me out on the LFC podcast, Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are. You know me, man. I'm doing the on the mic with Mike stuff. Crystal Davis. I'm talking to people in the porn industry. I'm talking about wrestlers. I'm doing the whole thing. And I'm on wrestling with wrestling.com. LFC. You can find it anywhere from soundcloud.com slash LFC. Twitter, Alondre FC, LFC MMA. I'm all over the damn place. And just shout out to Andre Corbeil, man. You could find me on St. Louis and rolling on dubs. Country Grammar. It's here. It's there. It's everywhere. I am Mike Larkin. I am Mr. Iron Bank. Just type me in. There I am links everywhere blue links even you know about them blue links right Chad? oh fuck off <laughs> so <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can check me out anywhere and of course you know max wrestling in the hot seat you also got to check that out as well because like i said i do you know podcast machine i live up to the name even while i'm on vacation you can check out the latest in the hot seat with ella j of a wrestling gal podcast you can check it out with pretty much everybody from you Daz, the butcher from Amir, from pretty much doggone everybody, AJ Kirsch, Alicia Toot. I got more coming. Robert Davis is coming on In the Hot Seat very, very soon. So we will be talking about your bouts, Trav, with him and the whole nine, man. So, yeah, just keep staying tuned and keeping your ears peeled for more audio content from Mike Larkin. So one and last thing, Mike. Do you yeah. know what year Brittany Savage won the J-Cup for the second time? Oh, Jesus. Are we really going to put me on the spot like that? Oh, God. It was a while ago. I, why are you asking me that, man? Because, because then I have to think. It was 2012. Yes. Oh, that's why you're thinking that. <laughs> like, don't put me on the spot like that, man. Like, you have to think. That was such a while ago. As soon as you brought up Jacob, I'm like, oh, damn, that was a while ago. <laughs> of course, you got to do it because he's on here with 2012. I see what you did there. I see what you did. You, you know me, everything comes full circle. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, keep tuning into Max Wrestling, keep watching and competing in the promo league, and we will bring you more post to post on June 17th for the aftermath of Trivia Takeover. Here's the Demon S versus the Shape. Post that shit. I like motors. My little mortals. Hello, shape. Or should I say, mythical being that you are. <laughs> you see, shape, we've been hearing you in the wind. The name. Shape. 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 But you don't want to bury us or 
take us to the light. I don't know what you are going to achieve, my sweet, but I know one thing's for sure. I'm taking your soul. This <laughs> is how I'm taking you back to my realm. Now we are going to use these to teach you the madness of the demoness. You are one of many forms, shape. You have been light. <laughs> the light still strikes us. <laughs> and then you have the darkness that we embrace all the time. <laughs> we are going to take you to hell. But these have been specially made just for you, Shape. Just so we could drag you, being the being that you are, as you are not mortal, you are not demon. You are a being. So when you're ready, my sweet shape, follow us and follow us to your doom. <laughs> <laughs> See you in a darkness shape. I'll be waiting. They say your palms can reveal your future. What they don't tell you is that fire is the key. Fire reveals all. You wish to take a soul that I do not possess. What you and everyone needs to remember is I am every shadow you ever saw in the corner of your eye and this mist is nothing but your imagination. I am every presence you have ever felt behind your back that sends shivers down your spine. Demoness. You once said, you make the boogeyman look fluffy. <clears throat> I ask you, what's the boogeyman? There is no boogeyman. There is only darkness. You claim to live in the darkness. You merely adopted it. I was born in it. You could say I was shaped by it. But you have learned well. You have embraced the madness. Madness! And the darkness has served you to the point of becoming promo champion. You are on my level. And that's why I need more than the darkness to face you. I need more than the madness to face you. What I need is the power. Of a god. Because now I've taken the shape of a dark avenger. I avenge people at their lowest. I avenged 
Mike Larkin and his fall by breathing new life into him. We're all mad here. I avenged Travis Anderson. Madness. By making the demoness meet her maker. As a matter of fact, Travis Anderson 